Did you know there have been over 775 different studies over the past few years linking the lack of autophagy to 11 different categories of diseases like cancers, heart disease, diabetes, and more? So why does a state like autophagy benefit so many diseases and disorders? Many who don't fast or haven't done the research are very cynical of something that claims to cure so many things. And frankly, I would have been too if I hadn't looked at the studies. So in this video, we're going to look at these studies and go back to basics to discuss things you need to know about the history, biology, and science of autophagy that'll help you understand how to lose weight and potentially stave off aging and disease. And yes, I'll explain Chris Hemsworth towards the end of the video, so stay tuned. My name is Joe Guevara and I analyze the science and research behind fasting, nutrition, fitness, and longevity. If you want to support our science-based fasting and health content, watch through the end of the video and check out our sponsors. Otherwise, let's get right into it. The word autophagy is derived from Greek, meaning eating oneself, and it has been broadly known as far back as the 60s as the thing your body does to break down old cells, or quote, reutilization of cellular materials and the disposal of organelles, as quoted in the first study published on it in the American Journal of Pathology in 1963. Since then, human-related effects were broadly researched, but the most comprehensive study related to diseases was back in 2008 in the journal Cell by Levine and Kramer, where there were already signs that it had effects on major diseases. However, its mechanisms and impacts weren't well understood until a cell biologist in Japan named Yoshinori Yasuni started researching yeast cells, ultimately winning him the Nobel Prize in 2016, where he found out exactly how autophagy worked and the 14 genes and enzymes that made it function. This was the key breakthrough that started the gold rush of research into fasting as an incredibly exciting field for the study of both health and longevity today. Fast forward three years to 2019, and Levine and Kramer published a follow-up to their 2008 paper, highlighting an even deeper understanding of those disease functions. It's a fairly comprehensive paper, so I won't go too deep, but they dived into many areas, including mutations of the 14 genes Osuni discovered, causing or initiating certain diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's when autophagy wasn't present. The simple explanation of its mechanisms is that autophagy, along with a variety of protective mechanisms through hormones, ramps up when your body isn't in growth mode, which it's now looking like it shouldn't be in all of the time. I'll get to this later. This happens when your body's insulin levels are significantly reduced and including a depletion of glycogen to a sufficiently low level from your muscles, as well as an absence of a protein called mammalian target of rapamycin or mTOR. This is why you can see this in the highest levels in a fasted state, but also in smaller amounts during exercise and caloric restriction. This process, among other mechanisms, allows your body to remove something called senescent cells, or something that the media has started calling zombie cells. When cells grow old and get damaged, it's normal for your immune system to get rid of them. And indeed, when you're younger, your natural rate of autophagy and physical activity is higher. So this happens fairly frequently. As you age, you get more sedentary, you lose muscle mass, and your ability to do this basic cleanup is reduced, meaning the amount of senescent cells continues to increase over time. This is visually seen as loose skin, empty fat cells, damaged brain cells and plaque, old red and white blood cells, wrinkles, and more. These zombie cells produce chemicals that then infect healthy surrounding cells that cause them to also get damaged, turning them into more zombie cells, and then creating this chain of reaction of damaged cells that, at a high enough number, we call disease. However, when senescent cells were removed physically from mice, they were shown to have lived healthier and lived 25% longer, according to a study in 2016. Now, over the past four years, a lot more studies have been conducted across a variety of health effects. The meta-analysis in 2021, I mentioned in the introduction by Kleonsky et al, analyzed no less than the 775 studies, finding specific links related to the lack of autophagy in preclinical data to the onset of human disorders, including cancer, brain disorders, heart disease, lung disease, liver disorders, kidney disease, infertility, eye disease, autoimmune disorders, metabolic syndromes, and even musculoskeletal diseases. But before we dive into that study, if you like this type of content that looks at the actual science behind fasting, health, and nutrition information that you hear about in social media, give us a subscribe and share the content with the people you think it can help. Now let's get back into it. 
So let's take what we know so far and answer that first question. Why is it implicated into so many damn diseases? Well, if you think about those diseases, the root cause of all of them are cells not working like they're supposed to. For example, cancer is an abnormal or genetically damaged cell that is normally cleaned up by your immune system, but happens to get out of control. Alzheimer's is the build of amyloid plaques in your brain that again, your body is normally supposed to clear out, but instead builds up causing neurons and cells not to function properly. You can go on and on with almost every disease. The current societal understanding of autophagy and modern advice like lose weight and exercise is that you do get health benefits, and I would argue at least partially through autophagy, but is only believed to be this interesting side effect of doing exercise. And indeed, a lot of fasting naysayers say that since exercise triggers autophagy, why bother fasting? Well, the real question is whether the level of autophagy triggered through exercise is enough for the human body. Anecdotal evidence and the prevalence of diseases mentioned in that study, including in individuals who do exercise, say no. I made an analogy in my 24 hour fasting science video saying that if you think of your body as a house and just ordinary living is going to cause you to create garbage, maybe some dirt and even in certain cases some damage, doing no cleaning or repair at all is going to wreck your house pretty quickly. Now, if autophagy is the cleaning and repair equivalent, exercise and even short-term or intermittent fasting can be seen as the equivalent of a small bout of basic cleanup in your body that you need to do on a day-to-day -day basis or even longer. However, if you become sick or do major damage to your body, like if you've been overweight or obese or have metabolic diseases like diabetes, if you've smoked or if you have a largely sedentary or unhealthy lifestyle for most of your life, then you are not going to experience enough autophagy to clean up the amount of damage that's built up in your body over years or decades through exercise and short-term fasting alone. The problem is that in our current civilization, society, and social norms, fasting is seen as extreme or starvation, when in reality, fasting and autophagy, especially as we age, is actually a biologically essential mechanism that current standard lifestyles do not enable. If your body has been in a state where you've built up a decent amount of dead and damaged cells, you need to let your body into a state of autophagy that allows you to clean it up in sufficient amounts. Now luckily, we are starting to see the turning point. With the amount of studies that are currently being done and still in progress, I firmly believe that fasting, even extended fasting, will become mainstream in less than a decade. There's just so much evidence on both health and longevity, not to mention general safety, that besides the social stigma of not eating, extended fasting, not just for weight loss, but overall health, will become the norm. In fact, one of my personal dreams, if this channel and business takes off, is to start a fasting spa like the ones in Germany here in North America, since the health benefits of fasting can do so much more for people's health than medications that simply try to fix symptoms instead of the cause. In fact, I've recently seen the National Geographic show Limitless back in 2022 make the rounds on TikTok, where Chris Hemsworth actually fasts for four days and talks about the mechanisms of zombie cells and more. He actually did interviews like one in Vanity Fair after he was shown to be at a genetic risk of Alzheimer's, where he's starting to see the light after having spoken with longevity expert Dr. Peter Atia while filming the series. So needless to say, the message is spreading, but it's up to all of us to make sure that we stay up to date and informed on their research and share it with those who need it most and adapt as new research gets published. Now, personally, I'm pursuing fasting and autophagy more for vanity's sake because I want to test the research against the loose skin I've had from a caloric deficit weight loss through a series of extended fasts, but the health benefits are definitely also top of mind. Now, if you have your own stories about autophagy or fasting health or any feedback, good or bad about this video or future videos you might want to see, feel free to post them in the comments below. Also, if you want to support my channel, the sponsor of this video is Canadian Protein, my personal supplement source since 2015 because they have third-party lab-tested supplements, high-quality products, and cheaper wholesale prices. They do also ship to the U.S., even besides their name, and have lots more than protein, including vegan selections. So go to this address and check out the selection if you're looking at getting some supplements before, during, or after your own fast, like creatine monohydrate, or grass-fed whey protein isolate, my two staples for my own weight loss and muscle building journey. 
Now, lastly, if you've watched this far and enjoyed the content, please do subscribe, but more importantly, share this with your friends and loved ones that you think it can help so that we can continue to spread the words of the scientific benefits of fasting to others. I primarily post here on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok, all at Rehash Fitness. Again, my name is Joe Guevara, and with that, I hope you all stay curious, stay healthy, stay happy, and I'll see you all in the next one.